Hi there, and welcome to another video in the line of milk and its impacts on the human body. Now, when I mentioned in a forum group that I was planning to do the video that I put up the other day on the links between milk and cancer and bovine growth hormone, somebody said, please, please put up something about milk and calcium. So absolutely, here it is. Now, before I get into the effects of milk and calcium within the bones, let me just cut to a short insert here quickly um, that was uh, from a presentation that was done by Dr. McDougall on the on whether or not we actually need calcium supplementation for uh, stronger bones. So, without further ado, here is what Dr. McDougall had to say. The dairy industry now has a new campaign. It's called a Three a Day. Three a Day for Stronger Bones. Three dairy products a day for stronger bones. Do you know where they get that slogan from? You've heard of the five a day program, which is a really good legitimate program. It's now gone up to nine a day because they know five a day of fruits and vegetables really isn't enough, but that's what they started. Now they're up to telling you to eat nine a day. Pretty soon they'll be telling you something really radical like just eat fruits and vegetables <laughs> because that's what the truth is. The, okay, so the average calcium intake in underdeveloped countries is 300 to 500 milligrams a day. Try and remember some of these figures. Calcium intake for the average American is 500 to 600 milligrams a day. World Health Organization. World Health Organization that's responsible for the nutritional needs of most people on this earth recommend 400 to 500 milligrams a day. But uh, industry influenced organizations in this country recommend things, amounts such as 1,000 to 1,300 milligrams a day from the US Food and Nutrition Board and the National Institutes of Health, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. Ask yourself, you see these figures, you ask yourself, well, how in the world could we have recommendations all the way from 150 to 1,500 milligrams a day? How could such numbers exist? The only way such numbers could exist is if calcium intake has little or nothing to do with the health of the bones. And that's what the truth is, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. The uh, dairy industry has influenced no, excuse me, let me say it correctly. The dairy industry has paid for almost all of the research studying the effects of calcium on bone health. Okay? You'll find it, if you look, whenever I read a study, I'll tell you the first thing that I do is I look for who funded it. And if you read the studies that are discussed over the next few minutes and the ones that are in this particular paper, which is in the September 2000 issue of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and you take in Pull the studies out of the library and look at the funding, you'll find almost every one of these studies were paid for by the dairy industry. Interesting. The investigators that published this paper in September of 2000, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, they found 57 studies that talk about the benefits of dairy products on bone health. 57, that's all, just 57. And when they looked at the uh, quality of study design, they decided that only 21 were worth really considering. Uh, protein content of the milk supplement may have a negative effect on calcium balance, possibly through an increase in kidney losses of calcium or through a direct effect on bone resorption. Focus on those words. Protein having a detrimental effect on the calcium. Don't forget those words, because the dairy industry's forgot them. This may have been due to an average 30% increase in protein intake during the milk supplementation. It says right there in their paper. What causes osteoporosis? The bones are designed to last a lifetime. Your bones aren't designed to dissolve when you're 40, 50, or 60 years old. They're designed to last you for 85 years. Strong, to carry you around, to do all the activities that a normal woman or man is supposed to do. So this has to be a disease. There has to be something wrong. We have to be living by the wrong set of rules. The wrong set of rules is the fact that we are eating a diet not intended for human beings. Okay, so there you have it. So the body doesn't need calcium supplementation to maintain healthy bones. So what it means is that 
if our bones are becoming brittle with the incidence of osteoporosis, then there must be something, and in all likelihood something within our diets, that is promoting the leaching of calcium from the bones. And research has shown that the main factor as far as the leaching of calcium from the bones is concerned is the proteins that are within milk and dairy products. And how this works is as follows. Milk and dairy products causes the blood to become acidic. And the body has a natural tendency to balance out the blood pH level. So if the blood becomes acidic, the body needs to find an alkaline source to be able to balance out this acidity. And the most easy and ready form of alkaline that the body can lay its hands on is calcium. And where does the body store all of its calcium? The body stores, or should I say the vast majority of its calcium, the vast majority of the body's calcium is stored in the bones. The bones is an abundant source of calcium. So what the body does is it leaches calcium from the bones to balance the blood pH. So what the dairy industry wants to have us believe is that we need to increase the amount of milk and dairy consumption to be able to increase our calcium intake while at the same time scientific studies have proven that the proteins within milk and dairy leach calcium from the bones and promote osteoporosis and as we could see from Dr. McDougall's presentation is that if you if the body hasn't got anything that is causing a leaching of the calcium, then you don't need to supplement with additional calcium to strengthen your bones because your bones aren't getting weak in the first place. So that's a very important factor to bear in mind. Secondly, and also very importantly, it must remember that the process of pasteurization of milk wipes out, removes all of the calcium from the milk. And milk products that have calcium in them, in their packaging, have calcium in there because the calcium has been added as a supplementation after the fact. So what you have is through the pasteurization process, you have the milk on this side, you have the calcium on this side. They get separated. You get sold the milk, and then when you... Re when you, you tests show that you've got low calcium levels and you're needing additional calcium, the calcium that's been taken from the milk in the first place can be packaged into tablet format and sold to you separately. Isn't that brilliant? So what, so what the dairy industry wants us to believe is that we need to increase our milk intake to be able to increase our levels, levels of calcium. In effect, we increase our milk intake to reduce our body's levels of calcium and which then in turn requires supplementation and in all, all likelihood the supplementation will be taking place using calcium that has been removed from the milk in the first place. So it's a win-win situation for the, for the dairy industry and a lose-lose situation for all of us. But the important factor is that within our natural diet of whole food, plant-based nutrition, there is more than sufficient calcium within that diet for us to be able to use. There is no need whatsoever for us to be consuming dairy products in order to be able to increase our calcium levels. And as we've just seen, that the intake of dairy products is actually linked to the reduction of calcium in the bones and which in turn directly leads to osteoporosis. That's my take on the links between dairy and calcium. 
please post your comments and questions down below, click the like button, share this out amongst your friends, and click the big red subscribe button that you'll either find at the bottom left hand corner of this little video screen, or in the top, sorry, the top right hand corner, just above my head over here, there's another tiny little red subscribe button, click either of those two, subscribe to my channel, that way you can stay up to date with new videos as I post them on a week-to-week -week basis. Stay carved up, stay safe out there, see you next time, cheers.